Basal Eurasians and Ancestral North Africans ANA, are two deeply divergent populations that played a foundational role in the genetic makeup of West Eurasian and North African populations. Basal Eurasians are a hypothetical population that split from all other non-Africans before they mixed with Neanderthals. This lineage is thought to have diverged from other Eurasian groups more than 50,000 years ago, possibly in or near the Near East or North Africa. CubeADM is a tool that allows researchers to estimate ancestry proportions in a target population using combinations of source populations, left pops, and outgroups, right pops, to constrain the model. To model basal Eurasian admixture, especially since there is no direct genome of a pure, basal Eurasian individual, I used an indirect method, including Neanderthal and Denisovan in the right populations, outgroups, allows QBM to account for archaic admixture. Since basal Eurasians had little or no Neanderthal ancestry, any target population showing lower archaic affinity relative to other non-Africans can be inferred to have basal Eurasian admixture. This setup allows QBDM to detect a ghost population, basal Eurasian, whose effect is to reduce Neanderthal ancestry in the target. So the key to these models is to include an African group in the lefts, but not use any African anchors in the rights. It is crucial to include Neanderthal anchors in the right. Unfortunately, there are no deployed Neanderthal groups on the dataset I used, and the first right population has to be a deployed. I found a way to work around that by using Denisova.dg as a right, since it is deployed and closely related to Neanderthals. One thing I learned about QPDM is to never use excessive or unnecessary rights. That's why I have a different set of rights for populations mixed with East Eurasians, such as the Indus Valley Civilization, versus populations that are purely West Eurasian, such as Zadzwana or Natufians. For example, including East Eurasian anchors in a model for Natufians will lead to less reliable results and worse plow. Now let's go over some ancient people groups and discuss their basal Eurasian admixture, from lowest to highest. The population with the lowest basal Eurasian ancestry are Yamnea, with a total of 18.4% basal Eurasian admixture. On top of that they also have around 20% East Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the Indus Valley Civilization. They carry around 23.4% basal Eurasian admixture. On top of that they also carry around 27.6% East Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the globular amphora culture. They carry about 23.6% basal Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the Caucasian hunter-gatherers. They carry around 24% basal Eurasian admixture and 19% East Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the Iranian Neolithic farmers. They carry around 25.7% basal Eurasian admixture. Additionally, Around a quarter of their ancestry is East Eurasian in origin. Next, we move on to Zadzwana. They carry 27% basal Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to BMAC, also known as Oxa Civilization. They carry 27.8% basal Eurasian admixture and additionally 13.2% East Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the Anatolian hunter-gatherers. They carry almost 29% basal Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to the Anatolian Neolithic farmers. They carry 29.4% basal Eurasian admixture. Next, we move on to late Neolithic Moroccans, who have 34% basal Eurasian admixture. Technically, this also include ancestral North African admixture, since ancestral North Africans also carry no Neanderthal. I haven't found a way to split ancestral North African from basal Eurasian in these models. And finally we move on to ibero marusians who seem to carry around half basal Eurasian and ancestral North African admixture. Thank you for watching until the end. Links to purchase my tools and services will be in the description.